So talking about prime numbers. And primes are numbers only divisible by themselves and one. And just a little hint for you, one isn't a prime. And there's a couple of reasons people use to explain that, but one of them is just thinking that it's kind of like the foundation, it's the building block of everything. So whole numbers, which is what we look for with um, primes, are built up of lots of ones, and so we don't want to include the one as part of that list of things that can be divided by themselves in one, because really itself is one, and one is the same thing. So it doesn't quite fit the definition of prime. But all the rest of the numbers that we can think about, so one not being one, what about two? Are there any numbers you can divide two by besides two and one? There's not, so that would be a prime. You've got three, four, the number four you could divide that by two, so the next number would be five. Five you could not divide by anything by itself. And as you kind of start to think through them, you get this really long list of numbers that are primes. And just to give a few here, so for example, all of these numbers here can only be divided by themselves in one to get a whole number, like no decimals or fractions or bits left over. You cannot divide 42 by 1 and get a whole number. You can only divide it by 41 and 1. So those are all primes. Some tricks for you to think about deciding whether a number is a prime or not is to kind of go through some of the lower primes and see if they actually divide by those or are multiples of those. And easy ones to think about are whether something's divisible by 2. If something's divisible by 2, it will be an even number. And those ones are pretty easy to figure out, so you know any even number is not a prime. If it's divisible by 3, there's a check that you can do to see if it's divided by, divisible by 3. And for an example with that, if I use the number 12, add the individual digits together, 1 plus 2 gives me 3. And is 3 divisible by 3? It is. So that means 12 is also divisible by 3. Another number that we could do for that could be something like 27. Again, 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. And is 9 divisible by 3? It is. And that means that 27 is also divisible by 3. So that's a trick that you can use to check for divisibility by 3. Another one is 5. And that's pretty straightforward, kind of like even numbers. Just look for a 5 or a 0 at the back. And you know it's divisible by 5. And so, one way that people often use to show prime numbers is a pattern called the sieve of Eratosthenes, um, and it's kind of a neat way to see what's happening. So, we'll take a look and see if I can get this playing. So this is from Wikipedia, this animation, and we'll just watch it go through. So, as we start, um, you'll notice one's not included because it's not considered part of the set of numbers we're looking through. The first thing it's going to do is actually start at the number 2, and then it's going to highlight any of the numbers that are multiples of 2, and in that case it's going to be all even numbers will get highlighted out, you'll notice. And if you do the numbers in rows of 10, you find this neat pattern starts to happen. So it's going to go through and do all the rows of 2, and then the next number it's going to look at is a 3 and it's going to look for any multiples of 3, anything that are divisible by 3, and color those ones out. And you'll notice that you get this whole new sequence starting in. So you've got these diagonals. I guess that 6 should sort of be a green, maybe a little bit of a bug in there. But you get these nice diagonal lines for all the patterns of 3. The next one they're looking for is anything divisible by 5, so they're canceling out everything with a 5 or a 0 at the back. After that, 6 we know already is not a prime number, so we don't worry about it. We'll look at 7, and we'll check to see if 7 is divisible by anything at all. Oh, sorry, we'll check to see whatever is divisible by 7, and we cross those off. And at that point, we've kind of gotten enough numbers crossed off that what's left are the prime numbers. So you get all the even numbers that are crossed out down. You get all the 3s that are crossed out on the diagonals. You get all the 5s and the zeros that are gone and a few of the sevens through there, and everything that is left are the prime numbers. So that's one way to look at it. Um, and actually, stop, refresh. Um, there are lots of primes, and there are a few kind of interesting ones too. 
there's a set called the twin prime. And these are primes that have just a space of two between them. So for instance, if we look for twin primes through this one, two and three are right next to each other, but three and five have a difference of two between them, so three and five would be twin primes, and so would be five and seven. And the next set of twin primes would be eleven and thirteen, because they have a difference of two between them. We have seventeen and nine, also a twin prime. And if you keep going up looking for ones with just a difference of two between them, they start to get further and further apart, 29 and 31. And as you go on, you can get, um, notice that they're actually quite spread out, and there are a lot of mathematicians that are working to figure out what is the biggest distance between any two twin primes. So they're playing with really big numbers that are in the billions and trillions. But we don't have to worry about those ones. So. Give a go, color in, in your own sieve to eliminate all the things that are multiples of primes, and get yourself a nice list of prime numbers.